But now I'd like to introduce a man, Wayne, Wayne Bergman, Credit Enterprises CEO. Wayne has been at the forefront advocating for indigenous rights and self-determination in the Kimberley region of Western Australia for more than 15 years. As CEO of Cred Enterprises, he is pursuing his passion to drive social change in the Kimberley by creating real opportunities for Aboriginal people to engage in modern Australian economy. In his role as former head of the Kimberley Land Council, Wayne drove land and sea management activities across the region, including the successful Kimberley Indigenous Ranger Program. Wayne has applied his skills and provided advice to many agencies and organizations, including the Western Australian Aboriginal Advisory Council, the Kimberley, the Kimberley Development Commission, and the Kimberley Regional Planning Committee. I have met this man. He is a very charming man, and I'd like to bring him up. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I um, had a speech prepared for this session, but I wanted to maybe use the time to kind of tell a story. And I think blackfellas all over the world like storytelling. So for the benefit of people who don't know much about Australia, Kimberley's West, North, Western Australia, right up the top there, where um, th that area is about 163,000 square kilometres. Um, someone put miles. It's roughly the same size of ca California. It's strong cultural background. You know, like in the Northern Territory, Northern Australia, there are many people practicing law and culture, living it, practicing it. Some of our old mob walked off the desert in the early 60s, uh, late, early 70s, late 60s. Um, uh, some people were still on the islands living with their parents before they met missionaries when they were 14. One of the KLC exec, one of our senior men, I'll say something about later, um, uh, never met anybody until he was about 14 and went into Watchlow Mission. Strong environment. Um, that's my son with Jabbo, got his first crocodile, um, some crabbing, bush turkey, country is really healthy, but it's been impacted on too. Um, landscapes from deserts, savannah to saltwater country, incredibly precious. Really proud of this ranger network. Uh, that's a map showing all the rangers around the Kimberleys. I think there's some one of the presentations in there. Um, there are, I think, about 28 different language groups in the Kimberley. We're making up of about 15 different native title claims. And a lot of us got very strong connection because it's our, our generation or our parents' generation um, that can tell stories about living on the land or first contact. Uh, this map's a bit old, about 65% of the Kimberley now is determined native title. So in Australia, we've got native title. I think in Canada and that, we'll talk about sovereignty, treaties, but we've got a, a not so fancy bit of law that gives us some token rights called native title. Agreements. So when I started in the Land Council, there were no native title mining agreements, and you're forced to deal with those native mining companies. Um, 
forced to deal with those mining companies because we know under the Native Title System or the Aboriginal Heritage Act, the governments will always give the big mining companies what they want. It's in the national interest. So in this context, Native Title might give us a seat at the table, but there's no guarantee of success. Because we want to ask ourselves what type of society we want to build. You see, development, anything we do, create ripples, like throwing a rock in a pond. Whether we're talking about our community development plans, mining companies coming in, tourists coming in, environmental protection area, they all create some type of ripples. But are those, how are they going to affect us? Are they for our own good? Or can we create something else from it? As a reflection of my time in the Land Council and with my senior leaders, we created a foundation called Umbringe Buru. Umbringe Buru is what we call is a social foundation. It owns Cred Enterprises, which is the company I'm the CEO of. And we're owned by each traditional owner group who appoints us. So my job into Cred is to create economic activity make sure traditional owners don't get ripped off, make sure we get the best agreements we can, and uh, we pro any profits we make go back to our foundation with all our members to share a percentage of. So we want to look after everyone who have this common value. The red areas are our current members. Um, that's probably about 90,000 square kilometres. Um, the other areas are groups we have alliances with or talking to and partnerships with. And a lot of them cross over families. Um, we cross over from family side, also cross over from cultural side. We have all those connections. This is a small piece of the West Kimberley. Just kind of, I, I want to dem demonstrate this because this is just, this is no romantic picture of what happens. We love our country, we practice our culture, we want to create something for the future. But these are the realities what we're faced with. These are some. This is just the oil and gas exploration tenements covering almost 100% of um, our traditional country and covering three of our neighbours and touching a number of others. Said to be potentially the next biggest shale gas development in the country. If, if some of these companies, big international companies, some Canadian companies, ConocoPhillips, Mitsubishi, Hess, American, all in there looking at it. And let's be clear, they didn't wake up one day and say, let's go to the Kimberley to help Aboriginal people. Let's make sure they're looked after and create jobs and business opportunity and pay them benefit. They're there to make money for their shareholders. One of the biggest challenge in this context we did inspired by my, my meeting with um, uh, Deputy Chief Ashley and um, uh, Wimiji Chief, is we negotiated a $1.5 billion package with Woodside Energy and the Western Australian Government and created a regional body also to look after Kimberley Aboriginal people across the whole created a bit like the Cree, came together because there was a need. Because when we were originally dealing with the challenges of exploitation of our country, there were no rules about LNG development on the Kimberley Coast. There, the, the biggest challenge was trying to get them all to one place to minimise, make as small as possible any impact. 
There's no rules to say you're not allowed to go there. That deal's Woodside's pulled out and that deal's kind of up in the air. Um, but the state government have made the $250 million commitment whether the project went ahead or not, and now they're trying to get out of it. So we look for partners and funders who work with representative organisations, who think in the long term to work with us. We're looking for partners who want to work with us on a journey. Because we want to ask, is this project responsible? We, again, we're balancing. How do we balance this uh, massive demand for exploitation of our country with trying to create opportunities for improving our well-being, maintaining our culture, creating our economies. And I kind of been thinking, how do you express this? What is the triple bottom line? Um, for me, it's about our culture and our people, trying to build our economy and our communities and our region with our traditional owner groups, and about our country and our environment. And so if projects, if projects don't kind of deliver on our triple bottom line, then we should be saying no to them. So you will see in most corp corporations, they'll talk about the triple bottom line, about people, environment, and economics. Well, let's put some of that stuff to the test. Let's put some of the, like, what, what is the future we want to build? Um, the mining industry, they're, they're not consistent on the triple bottom line for Aboriginal people. Agreements in Australia and around the world are all different. Why is it that some mining companies pay twice as much to Aboriginal people in other parts of Australia and sometimes the world and nothing to some some other groups. How is it that Kimberley Aboriginal people negotiated a billion dollar package for a similar type of project and there is no such package for traditional owners in the borough where they have an existing facility? Why is it, if native title is fair, why is it that Larrakia is given the privilege to talk about welcoming us to their country, but they have no rights. The federal court did not recognise their sovereign rights to this land. We get welcomed by the United Nations. Where's the justice in this? This is, we're storytelling now, a blackfellist saying, let's wake up. It's not a pretty picture about recognising our rights to create our own future. So the challenge to industry, they say they're committed to the triple bottom line, really? Then why are so many Aboriginal groups being treated differently around Australia and around the world? They say Australia was built, you know, one of the Australian antage. Australia was built on the back of the sheep. And now more recently, the dump truck. I don't know if any of you's heard that, but Gina Reidhart did her release for Northern Australia that Australia was built on the, is being carried by the mining industry on the back of the dump truck. Really? They're being carried on Aboriginal land. Let's be clear about that. Tell you what, 
if our families and many of the families who have been impacted by my, the mining industry or the pastoral industry were allowed to get royalties like some of the other families in the mining industry, we probably wouldn't be sitting here. We'd been able to look after ourselves. Government. Governments failed. They failed on the triple bottom line. They've gutted the Native Title Act. I, I said this at the National Press Club for 20 year, after 20 years of Native Title in Mabo. One of the strongest recognitions you can get if you want Native Title rights is the right to negotiate. What does that mean? That means if someone wants to take an interest, compulsory acquire your native title interest in land, you get six months right to negotiate with the government or the mining company or whoever is trying to take your interest. After that six months, the general rule is the proponent the government, the mining company, or whoever, third party, whoever it is, gets to take it. To me, that's like, if you put it in this context, if you own a house here in Darwin, you've got a backyard, and someone wants to go and use your backyard and say, well, I'm taking your interest, then they just wait six months, go in your backyard and do whatever they want. That's the Native Title Act. That's what they call our sovereign rights. That is so unfair and unjust. Now, I know we all care about the environment, but some environmental groups have ignored our people as well. They've ignored our cultural right to make decisions about how we pick the balance. We have the right to make decisions about our future. We live with that. We're consistently... I've been on an incredible journey. Old Joe Brown, who I acknowledged the other day, in my early days, I travelled around with him and sat behind him. I was never allowed to sit in the circle with the men until years after working with him and teaching me what was right and wrong. And then it's only in the last maybe 10 years that I've been able to stand in those men's meetings and have a say as to what I thought. We've had to earn that, been on this incredible journey. We, we're challenged with, I, I go to a night, you know, we can, I, I don't know of, any Aboriginal people that suicides haven't touched, or the stolen generations haven't the impact on them. My grandmother, I take when people come to Derby, I take them to the Derby jail because there's a, the original old jail that my great grandmother was taken to when she was eight years old, taken from Yeda Station, put on the on the wagon and taken there. And there's a plaque commemorating what happened. And our oral histories is Granny can remember her mother crying out to her. But she didn't know she was locked up in this jail with her sister. And they were put on the little train track that took her to the Derby jetty, then put on a lugger and taken to Broome and then up to Biggle Bay. We carry these things with us. I think about it all the time, I watched my kids grow up and wonder how inhumane can people have done that. And they say it might have been the thing of the time, but that's not true. You know, that's, that's just rubbish. That's just, you don't treat children like that. My, you know, we've had experience of my brother, my cousin brother. I was one of the last people to see him alive. We didn't have the support in Derby where we grew up, but he ended his life, saw no future. 
at the age of about 22. These are the kind of powerful challenges where we're trying to build a community and economy. When I've looked at the range of projects and I've gone around, and like on the video the other day, there are so many rangers, young people wanting to become rangers, because this, this is like an escape and a creation of meaning and economy, and we use our elders to be part of it, to build on the future. We created, we used the negotiations for the Kimberley gas project to lobby government to create the national heritage listings of the of the a large part of the Kimberley. And hopefully that will give those traditional owners in that group a little bit more say when mining and exploration comes to, de to develop. That they will be able to say, what sort of community do we want in the next 10, 20, 100 years time? What sort of legacies are we gonna create? And to me, this is like the real grassroots stories. The real grassroots stories about sharing stories because as I traveled around um, New Mexico, Canada, uh, Northwest Territories, Papua New Guinea, Queensland, and I started to meet other Aboriginal people who were dealing with all the same out of that melting pot of all these pressures, there were some people growing out and having strong leadership and, and trying to do the right thing for their picture. So how do we create a shared vision? This should not be, win should not be about the United Nations telling us what to do. Should not be about the Australian government or any government telling us to do. It needs to be indigenous driven because the way we see things is very different from the priorities of government, companies, politics. We have our own politics to create. Just that privilege and that ability to meet so many different people have allowed me to set benchmarks. And as I've gone and worked with other Aboriginal groups, I've been able to share with them some of the things that we have done. So do you know that some mining companies, publicly listed companies, have made agreements with Aboriginal people that go beyond the Her Aboriginal Heritage Act. Companies have contracted out of what they call their statutory rights to go to the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs and destroy an Aboriginal site. Because they, that, that was so important to us. That was the founding principle of the Kimberley Land Council and the Nukenbar struggle when we had the biggest dispute in the early 80s in the Kimberley. It was the whole basis of what Argyle Diamonds was built on, the destruction of an Aboriginal site. So it became very fundamental in our negotiations with Argyle for them for the Rio Tinto subsidiary company to contract out of its right to destroy Aboriginal sites from then on. So why this should be the rule then for all companies. Some companies have contracted higher standards than the Environmental Protection Act. So normally mining companies will say to you and say, oh, these are the standards of government for environmental protection. But some young people are here, some of the rangers who was with us, we said to them, well, hang on, this sea country and these islands are so important to us, we, we don't trust the government agencies protecting our environment, so you make a private contract with us about our rights to sue you directly if you make an environmental damage or an environmental harm. This comes back to what type of society you want to build. Where do you see yourself in the next 50, 100 years time? What is so important that it can't be sacrificed? Is there a balance that you can make some kind of compromise? And so some groups in the Kimberley have gone 
we will not entertain uranium mining at all. We won't even do an exploration agreement. Even though the Native Title Act and the laws allow them to go ahead and do it without our consent, my group have made a position and said we will not accept that. We've even created our own exclusion zone along the Fitzroy River that we won't let mining companies go in to explore because in our creation, Winyambu travelled along there and he was a family man. And he created the river and he fed his family from the billabongs as he, as he travelled and created the Fitzroy River. It's our central identity for us. So we've put a ban on companies exploring within the river. No right, there's no law to, to, um, to make this happen. No support from the state government or the federal government. We're just asserting it because it's important to us. I wanted to leave you with that thought because all this has got to be for some purpose. And Louis Karadatta, one of the senior men, he was one of the first contact men from the islands. And I can remember when I was under incredible pressure dealing with government in the land council. And we had a the Kimberley Land Council Executive Board meeting. And we were talking about the dramas of the Native Title Act and how unfair it was. And he got up and said, uh, this is an old man in his probably late 70s, early 80s at the time. He got up and said, I don't need government to tell me this is my land. And Lewis grew up without any education and he was this beautiful man. And you know, we all felt this incredible loss when he went. And I say to all my indigenous colleagues, you don't, we need to get better organized. And we should try and use an international network to get better organized, to care for country, create decisions about creating a balance and create the, the future that we want rather than being served it by someone else. Thank you.